Thanks. Welcome to Hannity. I'd like to say uh, all good news tonight. There's not a lot. My heart is troubled. Now, we're going to go through all the facts, news, information that a lot of people in the media don't want to give you. Protests continuing across the country. Brand new footage from the murder of George Floyd. It shows how a crowd of onlookers, this is very hard video to look at, begging, begging one of the other officers at the scene to step in and stop what was happening to George Floyd, minute after minute after minute. It's excruciating. We will play it with a warning. Also, meanwhile, anarchy, lawlessness reigns supreme in Seattle. The police precinct there has been abandoned by city officials. Another precinct in Minneapolis was burned to the ground just a few weeks ago in riots that had nothing to do with the honor of mem or memory of George Floyd. 800 cops now hurt. Some died and. We now know one is probably on life support for the rest of his life. And now, by the way, we go to the city of Atlanta. Last Friday night, 27-year-old man named Rashard Brooks was shot and killed by an Atlanta police officer. The officer involved in the shooting, Garrett Rolfe, is, was fired immediately. Uh, by the way, it's just breaking. Some 19 Atlanta officers have now resigned after what has happened in this case. We'll have details coming up in a minute. The other officer on the scene was placed on administrative duty. There are now growing calls for Rolf to be charged with murder, very different to what happened with George Floyd, and we will go through this in great specificity and detail. Also, yeah, to become a more perfect union, reforms are needed, desperately needed, way overdue. More training, mandatory cameras, more non-lethal options for the police must be made available. We can do that. We'll have more on that also coming up. And once again, we need to put all emotion aside. Let's start, let's begin with facts. Uh, and as I've been saying for years, I love body cams and I love cameras inside of patrol cars. And they're extremely helpful in understanding what really happens. That's why I didn't want to see the show Cops Canceled or Live PD Canceled, because we get to understand the difficulty of your job. And I believe it keeps everybody honest. It was about 10.30 p.m. Friday night. Two police officers responded to a call. Man was passed out behind the wheel of a car at a Wendy's drive through literally blocking the drive through Upon his arrival, the officers approached Rayshard Brooks' car and attempted to wake him up. Take a look. Yo. Yo. What's up, my man? Hey. What's up, my man? Hey. Hey, man, you're parked in the middle of the... Drive through line here. You good? You don't need a ambulance or anything like that? Are you just tired? All right, man. Just, just I'll move my car. Just pull up. Just pull somewhere and take it now. All right. All right. You good? <laughs> yeah. All right. Are you uh, you just are you here for a visit or what's uh? I'm visiting. Where are you visiting? Uh, my mother's grave site. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. How how long has she uh, passed for? It's it's been probably about a year and a half now. First, let me correct the record. There were not 19 guys that resigned in Atlanta. That came across a wire, and we now have been able to call and confirm it didn't happen. We'll have more on some police officers in other cities, though, that are uh, leaving the force, leaving the job, some retiring, and some are just outright quitting. As you can see, though, from that video, from both Rayshard Brooks and the police, courteous, professional. Mr. Brooks, obviously, very tired, but he was also respectful. And as you saw, the police, they offered condolences for Mr. Brooks' mother, who had recently passed away. Courteous, caring, professional on every level, according to what I see. A few moments later, after suspecting that Brooks was intoxicated, the police performed an alcohol sobriety test. We have that video, too. Hold on, Ms. Brooks. Will you take a preliminary breath test for me? Is it yes or no? I don't want to refuse anything. Uh, it's yes or no. It's completely up to you. Yes, I will. Okay, just wait here while I grab. Just trying to make sure, man, you're safe to drive. That's all. I know, man. I just you, you, you scared me a little bit because you were sleeping in there. So that's you know why I was making sure you're okay. You know, and then that's. I know. I know. You just doing your job. Just take a deep breath in. Put your mouth over the mouthpiece. Blow as hard as you can until I tell you to stop. Blah 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 blah. Stop. Very good. You had about one and a half drinks, but you don't remember what kind of drinks they were? No, sir. All right. I really don't understand. All right. I think you've had too much to drink to be driving. Put your hands behind your back for me. All right. Again, up to this moment, where we get to the handcuffing part, both sides polite, professional, cordial. However, Brooks failed the sobriety test. There was no option for the police at that point. He was over the legal limit. Police attempted to 
very cordially even, you could say, take him into custody. Up until this moment, from what we thankfully see, everybody, from what I can see, at their best behavior, courteous, polite, et cetera, by the book. Uh, and that's when, at this second, everything goes south. Now, this is a viewer warning. What you're about to see uh, from this point forward, if you have kids in the room, it is extremely graphic. Take a look. Put your hands on your back, boy. Yeah, put your hands on your back. Hey, hey, stop fighting. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. You're going to get tased. You're going to get tased. Stop. Mr. Stop. You're going to get tased. Stop. Mr. Now, seemingly, as you can see on that tape, out of nowhere, the moment the police tried to cuff Mr. Brooks, the video shows Rayshard Brooks first resisting arrest, then attacking both police officers. You see the struggle. Uh, both officers, you can see, are hit, and you hear the police on tape clearly saying over and over, stop fighting, stop fighting. We will have to tase you. Stop fighting. Stop grabbing the taser. And then, ultimately, Mr. Brooks grabbed one of the tasers. He stood up. Cops are still on the ground. The video seems clear. As Mr. Brooks is running, he turns around, and in fact, this is what the APD is now saying, and seems to fire that taser in the officer in foot pursuit. That's Officer Rolf, who was responding. He responded then by shooting Mr. Brooks twice in the back with a handgun. Horrific scene. And what, as you watch this, what's so, so sad to me about this is up until that very second when they attempted to handcuff him, the exchange was polite, professional, courtesy, all courtesies on both sides. All of this did not have to happen. Our thoughts and prayers with everybody involved in this, the Brooks family, everybody involved. Now, you heard what sounded like genuine niceness, respect from Mr. Brooks towards the police and the police towards him. Um, and everybody has to look at this and wish this never happened. This is not like... This is not at all like the eight minutes and 46 seconds on tape of a cop with a knee on the neck of George Floyd. But now the actions from these officers on the scene will rightly be scrutinized, uh, most likely, I would guess, by a jury. Now, before we get to the actual law, when I first saw the George Floyd video, our eyes, it was universal in this country. You know, maybe a few keyboard warriors, you know, anonymously tweeting or writing something online in their basement. Conservatives, liberal, we, and nobody disagreed. That tape did not lie to us. And I'm going to be consistent as I've always been on this program. And I, by consistent, I mean this. We don't rush to judgment. We believe in due process. We believe in the presumption of innocence. And for good reason. We contact sources. We talk to witnesses. We look at video. We gather evidence. We look at the facts on the ground. That's why we were right, for example, in the case of Michael Brown and Officer Darren Wilson, so many others were wrong. So many others rushed to judgment. And that's why we predicted it would be difficult to convict the officer. Similarly, with the murder, remember, Baltimore, Freddie Gray, in the aftermath of that. We're also right about Duke LaCrosse in that case, the UVA case, the Kavanaugh accusa accusations. I learned my best lesson from Richard Jewell when I was a local host in Atlanta and so many more. According to Georgia state law, this is what the policy is. And this will matter in a court of law. Police may use deadly force to apprehend a suspected felon only when the officer reasonably believes that the suspect possesses a deadly weapon or an object, device, or instrument which, when used offensively against any person, is likely to result in serious bodily injury. We know after the stealing of the taser, Mr. Brooks immediately became a suspected felon. That would be a felony. But is a police taser a deadly weapon or a device? And by the way, could it be used to seriously injure someone if the taser and the electrode uh, wires have already been discharged? Remember, Brooks already shot the taser as he ran away from the officers. Now, Georgia law also permits deadly force from police. This is the law. Quote, when the officer reasonably believes that the suspect poses an immediate threat of physical violence to the officers or others, or when there is probable cause to believe that the suspect has committed a crime involving the infliction or threatened infliction of serious physical harm. 
But not only did Mr. Brooks initiate the conflict, he also stole the taser. He aimed it at a police officer, shot it, what we can see on tape, and we all have all that video evidence. Again, that's why I like video cams on cops and, and in squad cars. This would have been, at the end of the day, what we call a simple DUI. Nobody wants it, but if you drink, you're a risk to others. Uh, probably in the first offense, if it was a first offense, it's a misdemeanor charge. You get booked, you get a summons, you get a court date, and usually you call somebody to pick you up and you go home. Assuming a first offense, likely alcohol counseling, worst case, license suspension, and so that which means it's all sad, tragic, unnecessary.